بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. We welcome you back to episode number two of Islam Q and A. Um, the last episode we spoke about um, the most important aspect of Islam, which is Tawheed. And this is the second episode in the series of Islam QA, in which we will be picking up questions from the famous website islamqa.com and perhaps some other sources, depending on what the question is. And we'll be mentioning and uh, be recording in these programs in the future, inshallah. So today we'll be dealing with the opposite of Tawheed, the most important thing for us to know is Tawheed and also what is the opposite of Tawheed. Tawheed which means monotheism, the opposite of Tawheed is Shirk which was also mentioned in the previous um, you know, lecture, in the previous uh, episode, uh, episode number one and today we'll be talking about Shirk which is polytheism, polytheism or associating partners with one God, associating partners with Allah in worship or divinity. The question today taken from islamqa.com is I would like to know if talismans are allowed. I have read Kitab al-Tawheed and some books by Bilal Phillips but I found in Al-Muatta that there is hadith allowing some sorts of talismans and even Kitab al-Tawheed mentioned some salafs allowed it. The hadith can be found in Al Muwatta, Volume 50, Hadith 4, 11, and 14. Please reply and tell me the authenticity of these ahadith and give me more information about this issue. Thank you. So, the answer from uh, the website, which is taken from uh, the answers from Sheikh Al Sheikh Al Islam, uh, Sheikh uh, uh, Al Al Rahmatullah and some other uh, kibar ulama. The answer goes, praise be to Allah. First, we could not find the ahadith whose soundness the questioner asked about because we do not know the text of those ahadith. He said that they were in volume 50 of Al Muwatta, but Al Muwatta is only one volume. Hence, we will like to quote what we are able to of the hadith a hadith that have been narrated on this topic and we will explain inshallah the rulings of the scholars on them hopefully some of this will be what the questioner is looking for now just to cut you and mention a small point over here uh, talismans and wearing amulets is considered to be part of shirk it, consider, it is considered to be shirk and it is not the topic of shirk in and of itself that, it, that we're discussing in this episode. But we are discussing one of the forms of shirk in this episode, which is very important for us to know, especially for those who are new to Islam, for those who come from different backgrounds and religious beliefs and have uh, embraced Islam recently. And also for those Muslims who are confused about this topic because of the heretic practices in the Muslim Ummah by the uh, heretic sects. So further on, uh, the Sheikh mentions about the narrations that uh, would clarify this issue of talismans. Um, number one, it was narrated from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud that the Prophet وسلم, said, the Prophet of Allah وسلم, disliked 10 things. Okay, this is Abdullah ibn Masood actually saying there's a uh, error in, in uh, there's a typo over here. Abdullah ibn Masood he says the Prophet of Allah, uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, disliked 10 things yellow coloring, meaning khaluq, a perfume made from saffron, dyeing gray hair, trailing the lower garment, meaning wearing the lower garment the izar or the pants or the kandura uh, dish dash below your ankles or trailing them uh, you know on the floor wearing gold ring of course for the men throwing dice 
a woman adorning herself before people who are not their, her mahram, meaning who, those who are not closely related, uh, you know, the relatives where she's allowed to adorn herself in front of her father and her, and her husband and so on. So a woman adorning herself before people who are not her mahrams, using spells in doing ruqya of the haram kind, uh, except with the mu'awadathain, that is the qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq and qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas, which are known as mu'awadathain, uh, wearing amulets, coitus interruptus, and having intercourse with a woman who is breastfeeding a child. But he did not declare them to be prohibited. This was narrated by an nasai uh, and Abu Dawood. So the meaning of having intercourse with a woman who is breastfeeding a child, it means that if she becomes pregnant, this will harm the child who is breastfeeding. That is why it was disliked by Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. The second narration mentioned by the Shaykh is, it was narrated from Zainab, the wife of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, from Abdullah, that he said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallam, say, spells, ruqya, amulets, and love charms are shirk. I said, why do you say this? So Zainab is now asking Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, her, her, her husband, when he, when he mentioned that I heard Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi saying, spells and amulets and love charms are shirk. So she said, why do you say this? By Allah, my eye was weeping with a discharge and I kept going to so and so, the Jew who did a spell for me. When he did the spell, it calmed down when I went to this Jew and this is what Zainab is saying. So Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, that was indeed just the work of shaitan who was pricking it with his with his finger with his hand and when the jew uttered the spell he stopped pricking it all you needed to do was to say as the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to say so what abdullah ibn ba he abdullah ibn mas'ud he teaches her his wife that instead of going to these uh, you know magicians this these people who cast spells and, and it is haram to cast spells and, and it, is, it is a form of shirk, instead of doing that, you should say the dua that Prophet ﷺ taught. Because when you were doing the haram, when, we, when you were committing the shirk, shaitan was, uh, uh, you know, uh, happy and he left irritating your eye and, uh, you know, your weeping of your eye stopped because he stopped irritating your eye. But when you were not doing the shirk, he would come and poke you so you could go and commit the shirk. Look at the devious uh, ways of shaitan, the enemy of human beings. So Abdullah ibn, uh, Abdullah ibn Masood, he goes on to say, instead of that, you could have said, as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu used to say, أذهب الباس رب الناس اشفي أنت الشافي لا شفاء illa shifa'uka shifa'an la yughadiru saqama remove the harm o lord of mankind and heal you are the healer there is no healing but your healing a healing which leaves no disease behind and this was narrated in abu daud and ibn majah this hadith was classified as sahih by shaykh al albani in Al Silsila Sahih Sahiha uh, in 331 and 2972. The number three narration is mentioned uh, with regards to this topic is it was narrated that Uqba ibn Amir said, I heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, say, Whoever wears an amulet, may Allah fulfill his need, and wh whoever, whoever wears a seashell, may Allah not give him peace. And this is narrated by Ahmad. This hadith was class, classified as da'if by Shaykh al-Albani uh, in da'if al-Jami. Uh, narration number four, which is mentioned here, is it was narrated from Uqba ibn Amir al-Juhani that a group came to the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa to swear their allegiance, bay'ah, to him. 
He accepted the bay'ah of nine of them, but he did not accept from one of them. So they said, O Messenger of Allah, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you accepted the bay'ah of nine, but not one, not this one. He said, he is wearing an amulet. So the man put his hand inside his shirt and took off his um, amulet. Then he, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, accepted his bay'ah and he said, whoever wears an amulet has committed shirk. Whoever wears an amulet has committed shirk. This is narrated again by Ahmed ibn Hanbal. This hadith was classified as Sahih by Shaykh al-Albani in Silsila uh, Sahihah 492. So for today, inshallah, these will be the um, hadith that we mention uh, regarding the topic of amulets and uh, you know, wearing charms and amulets uh, so that we will inshallah uh, have enough time for you to research and we also inshallah will continue this inshallah so in the second part of the second episode which will deal with uh, you know the other narrations and other dalail uh, evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah where, wherein we, we find that wearing amulets and, and charms and these kind of things is haram and shirk and it's a minor shirk and sometimes a major shirk. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك ونتوب إليك